Let's go, man. It's time for the run down for. God, not again. Thunder! Where are you? Thunder, this is not funny. My God. Damn it! Thunder, this is not funny. You already went through this earlier this year. Have my summer job back later. Summer job? It's some job. He's not here. not here either. It's, it's disgusting. All right, look, look, forget, forget about this. We gotta get back to the studio. We got a rundown to do. Forget your shift, man. Seriously, SummerSlam is tomorrow. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Fine. Meet me back at the studio after your shift. WWE Network. An extraordinary man who can do extraordinary things will step up to the challenge against The Fiend in what is sure to be a clash for the ages. And of course, we also got a Viper, the owner of the three most destructive letters in sports entertainment, looking to take away the fairy tale dream of a man who worked 11 years to reach the pinnacle of his career. And finally, the Beast will go head-to-head -head with the supposed Beast Slayer one more time for the Universal Championship. But before it is time for that extraordinary man and the Fiend to clash, before it's time to put that man's 11-year pinnacle up to test against the three most destructive letters in sports entertainment, before it is time for SummerSlam, it's time! For the rundown! Thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another video right here on YouTube.com. As of course, you already know who I am. Mr. Controversy and the operator of the best damn Twitter handle. No. Wait for it. To mankind! This 
is the official rundown for WWE SummerSlam 2019, which of course is streaming live on the WWE Network tomorrow night from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, with the pre-show starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. They cut the pre-show down an hour for the SummerSlam uh, show. I'm actually shocked that they did, but apparently uh, WWE wants to go back to quality over quantity, which I can appreciate, but at the same point in time, fucking Goldberg in a match on SummerSlam over the Intercontinental Championship, over the SmackDown Live Tag Team Titles, or the Raw Tag Team Titles. Yeah, it's, it's real quality, WWE. But regardless, regardless, we're going to talk about all things SummerSlam here on The Rundown, and we're going to start it off with the Cruiserweight Championship match between Drew Gulak and Oni Lorcan. Now, of course, we know that this is Drew Gulak's second title defense. Oni Lorcan won the six-pack challenge this past Tuesday on 205 Live. I'm actually shocked they went with Oni Lorcan this early. I didn't really think they were going to do that because, realistically speaking, Oni Lorcan is the guy to take the title off of Drew Gulak. And since Drew Gulak has waited three years to get this opportunity, I don't see Drew Gulak losing here. Drew Gulak is too good to be wasted as a transitional champion. Realistically speaking, Drew Gulak is the next man to go up to 205 Live uh, after he loses the Cruiserweight title, of course, possibly in 2020. But right now, Drew Gulak is in a position where he can't lose, and I don't think Adam Pearce, who is now running 205 Live, is going to have Drew Gulak lose the Cruiserweight title only 50 days after winning it. Only Lorcan, I really feel as though he doesn't have enough momentum behind him, and he would have gotten... He would have gotten more wins behind him because obviously he only had two wins going into that six-pack challenge and he would have challenged Drew Gulak in the fall. Like I said, Humberto Carrillo has been undefeated for five months and realistically speaking, all that momentum shouldn't go to waste. Realistically speaking, Humberto would have been a perfect interim, interim opponent, but at the same point in time, I'm not going to complain too much because Oni Lorcan and Drew Gulak will more than likely give you one of the most hard-hitting matches on SummerSlam's card. I don't know if this match is going to be in the pre-show or not. There's supposed rumors going around that Drew McIntyre and Cedric Alexander are going to be on the show as well. I haven't heard anything. I have not checked WWE.com. I have not checked Twitter. I have not checked Instagram or Facebook or any social media related WWE platforms recently. So I don't know if that match is going to be confirmed. I don't know if an IC title match is going to be on the pre-show between Ali and Nakamura. But at the same point in time, I can... Almost guaranteed that the Cruiserweight title match will be on the pre-show. I'm expecting a hard-hitting match. I know Honey Lorcan and Drew Gulak are going to deliver. And based off of everything, I'm going to go with Drew Gulak to retain the Cruiserweight Championship considering the fact that he hasn't had much of a reign with it. And I feel as though Drew Gulak right now is in the best position of his career. He's got that new attitude change, that ruthless aggression, that Wolverine beard and the slick back hair. And at this rate, Drew Gulak is one of the best things about WWE right now. As for Oni Lorcan, I have a feeling that Oni Lorcan is going to be built up again, and more likely than not, he could take the Cruiserweight title off of Gulak, or they could go ahead and have Humberto Carrillo do it, since Humberto still has not lost a match yet, and he gets done with his Lucha House Party feud with Lince Dorado, and we could very well see Humberto versus Gulak at Clash of Champions. But as far as SummerSlam goes, I'm going with Drew Gulak to retain the, the uh, Cruiserweight Championship. Let's talk about AJ Styles and Ricochet for the United States Championship. Now, unfortunately, we've seen this match three times already, and the uniqueness is gone, the specialness is gone, and they haven't given us anything outside of a 3.25 star match at this rate, which is kind of depressing. I feel as though they were handcuffed at Extreme Rules, which I was live in attendance for. And I, I really hate that aspect that the superstars are handcuffed and pretty much told to keep it down and keep it mellow during a championship match on a pay-per-view just to set up a rematch down the line, which ultimately is going to be better than the first one. I fucking hate that. I, I cannot stand that. I, I don't understand what the mentality what the mentality is of, of um, the WWE with matches like that. I can only hope that is one of the major key points that's going to change when we obviously go into Fox Sports on SmackDown Live in the beginning of October. But as far as Ricochet and Styles go, I expect them to 
put forth all their effort here. I don't think they can hold back anymore. It's fucking SummerSlam, for Christ's sakes. You cannot hold Ricochet and Styles back for a pay-per-view like SummerSlam. This is your second biggest pay-per-view of the year. I expect a 22-minute classic. I expect Ricochet to obviously look fantastic. Ricochet always looks fantastic in every match that he's in. But I expect Styles to retain. Mainly because of the fact that AJ Styles just won the championship in the OC. The OC is the Raw Tag Team Champions. And at this rate, the OC, all having championship gold is what is best for business right now. You are going to need a top stable, especially a top heel stable, on WWE television, specifically on the main roster. You already got the Undisputed Era in NXT. You need something on the main roster. Specifically, Gallows, Anderson, and Styles of the OC is the best choice right now. I expect Styles to retain. I expect this to be a great match. And Styles, I don't know where he goes. He could possibly go into a match with... If they want to do Cedric Alexander, they could do Cedric Alexander. If they want to do somebody like Rey Mysterio, if he sticks around... You know for a fact that if Rey Mysterio... If Rey Mysterio does not see improvement in any sort of booking, he's going to go to AEW. I think he has this clause in his contract where he can leave after 18 months. So you know that's going to factor in into whatever Mysterio has going on. But as far as the match at SummerSlam goes, I'm going with AJ Styles to retain. I don't really know where Ricochet goes. If I was a betting man, I would definitely put Ricochet in the world title picture after SummerSlam. I can definitely see Ricochet going forth against Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre for the Universal Championship, possibly going into a Universal title match at WrestleMania 36. We'll have to see what happens, but I'm calling Styles to retain. Next. Next. Obviously, we have... The Fiend, Bray Wyatt versus Finn Balor. Now, I don't, I don't know if we are going to see the demon Finn Balor. Realistically, we should. Realistically, we should because of the fact that it is a grand stage like SummerSlam, number one. And number two, because of the fact that, because of the fact that um, Bray Wyatt getting a victory over The Fiend would really legitimize, or excuse me, Bray Wyatt getting a victory over The Demon. I almost said Bray Wyatt getting a victory over The Fiend. But Bray Wyatt getting a victory over the Demon would really legitimize Bray Wyatt's Fiend character. And I like I like how they're going back and forth between the Mr. Rogers character and the Fiend ruthless and just no, no fucks given uh, Bray Wyatt character with the Fiend. I love what they're doing and how they've been booking the Fiend. The unpredictability of the Fiend is very good. The, the creepy demeanor and the creepy laugh that... The Mr. Rogers side of Bray Wyatt has is great. Now, regardless of whether it's The Fiend versus The Man or The Fiend versus The Demon, Bray Wyatt should win no question. Bray Wyatt should win no question. Finn Balor, this is Finn Balor's swan song for a little while. He's going to take a two-month break to recharge his batteries. Obviously, the report came out earlier this year. I believe it came out a little bit after Extreme Rules. And more likely than not, I can definitely see Finn Balor returning around Survivor Series, and Finn Balor is going to come back and join the OC. And Finn Balor could very well be put in a Universal Title program. Finn Balor could very well win the Universal Title, and we could have Finn Balor as Universal Champion. We can have AJ Styles as the United States Champion, and we could have Gallows and Anderson as the Raw Tag Team Champions. We can have a complete OC Takeover. We could end up seeing a heel Finn Balor versus a babyface Ricochet for the Universal Championship. At WrestleMania 36. I would fucking love that. I think that, that would be a fantastic idea. I think that would be a fantastic feud for both men. Whether it's Ricochet winning the Rumble or Ricochet winning the Elimination Chamber, I think that's possibly the best route to go as far as the Universal title goes going into SummerSlam. That's just me. But um, as far as the match SummerSlam goes, I expect this to be a competitive match no matter what. I don't think Finn Balor should get squashed no matter what. You need to have a competitive match. You need to give these matches time, especially that there's only 10, 11 matches on the show. You cut down six matches to only have 10 or 11 matches on the show. There's no excuse why any of these matches, except for Goldberg and Ziggler, should go less than 12 minutes. I'm calling The Fiend Bray Wyatt to get the victory over Finn Balor, whether it's the man or the demon. Speaking of Goldberg and Ziggler, let's talk about Goldberg and Ziggler. I really don't give a shit about this match. I don't think anyone gives a shit about this match. Um, at this rate, at this rate, um, the fact that Goldberg is even on SummerSlam is absolutely fucking comical. It's fucking laughable. It really is. 
I don't really expect much from this match, but considering that there's only 10, 11 matches on the show, I wouldn't even be surprised if this match goes 10 minutes. I mean, you have to remember something. Ziggler is the type of guy that could really lead a match. You, I can definitely see Ziggler being the one to lead Goldberg to a 10, 11, 12 minute match. We could definitely see a 10, 11, 12 minute match out of Goldberg. Now, obviously, Goldberg can't really work that type of match, but considering the talent that he was working with before Dolph Ziggler, he could only realistically go five minutes in the ring. He was working with The Undertaker, he was working with Brock Lesnar, he was working with those guys. He was working with the old guys. The guys that don't really have many moves, the guys that can't really move, the guys that can't lead a match. So, at this rate with Ziggler, I really wouldn't be surprised if this goes 10 minutes plus. Now, I could ultimately be proven wrong and we could end up getting we could end up getting a decent match between Goldberg and Ziggler. It's unlikely. It's very unlikely, but at this rate I genuinely hope I'm proven wrong. I genuinely hope I'm proven wrong because I don't wanna I don't want to sit in my usual worn out wooden chair and complain about SummerSlam. I really don't want to complain. I don't want to complain, but the WWE doesn't give me anything of substance to praise, specifically the main roster, especially with the last few pay-per-views that we've had. Not including WrestleMania. I really don't see this going any other way except for Goldberg hitting the spear, a jackhammer, and Goldberg beat Ziggler. There's really nothing else. If, you, if you're picking Ziggler to win, you know, I don't really know what to tell you. Goldberg is taking the win over Ziggler. Moving on, moving on. Let's talk about the Raw Women's Championship match between Natalia and Becky Lynch. This is a submission match. Now, I, for one, have no problem with this match. I think this could be a very nice back and forth. Realistically, this has been the best built feud going into SummerSlam. I like the intensity that Natalia has shown. I like the back and forth promos between Becky and Natalia specifically. The fact that it's a submission match adds a little intrigue to it. And, you know, all in all, I can definitely see Natalia walking out of... SummerSlam with the Raw Women's Championship. Realistically, there's three Canadians on this show that are in jeopardy of losing. There's three Canadians on the show that are in jeopardy of losing. If I can pick two Canadians that are going to win, I'm picking Natalia and Kevin Owens, considering the stakes that are at hand right now. If Natalia can keep up this intensity going, Going into the fall months, I really wouldn't mind her as the Raw Women's Champion. And realistically speaking, if you want to, and I know I know that Fox Sports would definitely want top draws, Fox could very well want Becky Lynch. And in order for Becky Lynch to get drafted to SmackDown Live, to go into Fox Sports with SmackDown on Fox, obviously Becky would have to lose the Raw Women's Championship and would have to get drafted afterwards. And all this talk about a draft after SummerSlam, it really gets the wheels in my head turning and it makes me think that Becky Lynch could very well be in real jeopardy of losing the Raw Women's Championship. And to be quite honest, I would have no problem with it. Her Raw Women's Championship reign has been terrible thanks to WWE and that fucking horrendous feud with Lacey Evans, which I don't even want to talk about. But as far as this matchup with Natalya goes, I can definitely see this match being a very competitive match. Uh, it could be a very innovative match. And I'm going to go with the bold prediction here. I'm calling Natalya to win. I'm calling Natalya to win, and I think Natalya is going to be the new Raw Women's Champion. And if I'm a betting man, I would say that Fox wants Becky. And I'm going to say that Becky gets drafted to SmackDown whenever that draft may be after SummerSlam. Moving on to the next match between Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon. Now, first of all, I don't even know why this match doesn't have a stipulation on it, number one, as far as weapons go. The only stipulation is if Kevin Owens loses, he quits WWE. And realistically speaking, if we're being honest here, the stipulation should be reversed. Or Shane McMahon should at least have his career on the line as well. Well, what happens if Kevin Owens beats Shane McMahon? Is Shane McMahon still going to stick around after SummerSlam? He shouldn't. He sure as hell shouldn't. I cannot, I, I cannot stress enough how vital it is to get Shane McMahon off of television before we hit before we hit October and we have SmackDown Live on Fox. I cannot stress how vital that is. Realistically speaking, I genuinely hope that Shane McMahon, I genuinely hope that Shane McMahon loses, which I know he will. I hope that Shane McMahon loses and I genuinely hope that I genuinely hope that this is the last that we see of Shane McMahon. 
We really don't need Shane McMahon taking up a spot on every single fucking pay-per-view. Shane McMahon has been on the Rumble. He's been on the Chamber. He's been on Fastlane. He's been on WrestleMania, Money in the Bank, Super Showdown, and Extreme Rules. Now he's going to be on SummerSlam. That is eight fucking pay-per-views this year. And if we really, if we want to go back a little bit more, he was on Crown Jewel and he was on Survivor Series. So that's 10 pay-per-views in the last year. 10 pay-per-views in the last year, nearly a year, that Shane McMahon has been on. Taking up so much TV time, pretty much taking away a spot that could be used for someone more important and a spot that could be used for someone in a major storyline or a major championship. Now, you're having Shane McMahon take up a spot on SummerSlam, whether it's against Kevin Owens or not, but you're having Shane McMahon take up a spot on SummerSlam when you have multiple championships that aren't even being fucking defended on the show. The women's tag team title match is taking place on Raw the following night. That just really gets under my skin. I'm just telling you, that, that really gets under my skin. I mean, I, I, I expect this to be somewhat of a decent match considering what they did at um, Hell in a Cell back in 2017 was very good. It was a very good Hell in a Cell match. It had some innovative spots. It was very brutal at times. And I expect Kevin Owens to win. However that may be, whether Shane McMahon uses the dirty tactics, whether we have Elias get involved or McIntyre get involved, I expect Kevin Owens to walk out victorious at SummerSlam. Moving on to Charlotte Flair versus Trish Stratus. I expect this to be a very good match. Realistically, all, all of the matches have the potential to be very good matches, but like I always say, it all depends on WWE's mentality and WWE's booking. If we get great, if we get great wrestling, good. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. But the booking of the matches always is going to make or break the show. Whether it's booked to be long or short, whether this person is booked to win or that person is booked to win, whether it's booked to win or whether they're booked to win by pinfall, submission, count out, or DQ, the booking of the matches always makes or breaks the show. The wrestling could be great, but the booking always is going to determine the quality of the show. You can take a look at fucking Stomping Grounds. You can take a look at Money in the Bank. You can take a look at fucking Crown Jewel. You can take a look at Super Showdown, you can take a look at Extreme Rules. The booking of that show broke it. The booking of those shows completely ruined them. So again, I don't know how WWE is going to go about the majority of the matches here. I don't know how they're going to book them. I just hope I just hope we get some good wrestling. I just hope we get some good wrestling and we get the right people walking out victorious. Now on to Charlotte and Trish Stratus before I kind of branched off into something else. Charlotte and Trish Stratus. This is a dream match to many. It's a dream match to me, I'm not going to lie. Seeing the present day superstar and Charlotte Flair combi uh, compete, I almost say combine, compete with the legend that is Trish Stratus, it, it's, a, it's actually going to make for a nice back and forth. I'm not going to lie. Trish Stratus apparently says that this is going to be her last match. I don't know. We'll see. I expect this to be a very good match, and I expect Charlotte Flair to walk out victorious here. Now, if I'm a betting man, Charlotte Flair would walk out victorious mainly because of the fact that Charlotte Flair needs some momentum behind her and Charlotte Flair is more than likely going to be inserted into a, into a women's championship matchup down the line. It should not be against Bailey, and I'm going to explain why. Charlotte Flair is going to come out victorious, which leads me to the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match between Bailey and Ember Moon. Now, this match definitely has the potential to steal the entire fucking show. If they want to kick this match off, um, if they want to kick, kick off this match um, at the beginning of SummerSlam, I definitely wouldn't mind that. Realistically, you could take a lot of these matches. You could take Rick Shane Styles. You could take Bailey and Ember. You could take Natalya and Becky. You could take The Fiend and Finn Balor. Realistically, every match, except for the two world title matches, could kick off the show. I definitely wouldn't mind Bailey and Ember kicking off the show. As far as the outcome goes, listen... Bailey has doing, been doing well. I will say she has been doing well with what she's been given as the SmackDown Live Women's Champion. That doesn't make her reign good. Her reign has been fucking boring, lackluster, and uninteresting thanks to the booking of WWE booking Alexa Bliss two matches straight against Bailey. But aside from that, Bailey was the correct woman to win Money in the Bank, and she was the correct woman to cash in to win the championship. 
You got that right. Ember Moon was the correct woman to go into SummerSlam to face off against Bailey. They got that right. That's half the battle. You cannot hold back Ember Moon any longer. This woman has waited 17 months to get her first ever title opportunity. 17 months to get a title opportunity of any sorts on the main roster. You cannot hold this woman back. You can't. If Ember Moon doesn't win here, I have zero faith that WWE is going to give her her moment down the line. I have zero faith in WWE. At this rate, Ember Moon right now is looking like the female Sami Zayn. She's been on the main roster for an extended period of time and not one championship win, not one championship reign. It's fucking pathetic. It really is fucking pathetic. There is no reason why Ember Moon shouldn't walk out victorious here. Ember Moon needs to win the championship. I cannot stress that any more. I cannot stress how vital it is for Ember Moon to win the championship, even if Charlotte is to beat Ember Moon. I don't care how long Ember Moon holds the championship for. Ember Moon needs to win the championship, and Ember Moon needs to go into the fall as champion. If you want to have Charlotte beat Ember Moon on the debut episode of Fox, I wouldn't mind that. I really wouldn't mind that, but Ember Moon needs to win the championship. Anyway, we got two more matches left, and then we're going to get out of here. First things first, as far as the two main matches go, we got the world championship match between Kofi Kingston and Randy Orton. I can definitely see this match being one of the best matches of the year if WWE really wants to go forth with it. Uh, we already know that the story between Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston writes itself. We know that Randy Orton has done a phenomenal job as a heel. We know that Kofi Kingston, when he's put in a big match situation, he can bring it. Even though his reign has been booked horribly thanks to a, a horrendous fucking feud with Ziggler and a worthless 10-minute match, uh, 10 minute match against Joe at Extreme Rules. But I can definitely see Kofi Kingston and Randy Orton going 20 minutes. I can definitely see Kofi Kingston and Randy Orton being the match that definitely, definitely is the embodiment of a world championship match. I don't think we've, we've had ourselves a... Great world championship match ever since that matchup at WrestleMania with uh, Kofi Kingston and Daniel Bryan. Randy Orton, I feel, is definitely going to bring the best out of Kofi Kingston, and I fully expect Randy Orton to win, and Randy Orton is going to go into SmackDown Live on Fox Sports as the WWE Champion. Final match before we get out of here. So, obviously, Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins, the feud has been built up so poorly. The entire aura and uniqueness of this match is gone. They've been doing the same shit that they did before WrestleMania. And I, 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 I just want this feud to be over. And I, I think I speak for many people. We just want this fucking feud to be over. The feud has no energy. The feud has no heat. Seth Rollins has been made to look like a complete bitch. Brock Lesnar in his third reign as Universal Champion. I mean, what, what is there to support? What is there to support? I don't get it. I don't get how anyone could support it. I don't understand how anyone could defend the bullshit that we see week in and week out. But, you know, at this rate, you know, I can't even, I can't even complain about that because, you know, what, have I, what haven't I said already? I think you've heard me say everything upon everything imaginable as far as the the things that are wrong with this entire Brock Lesnar-Seth Rollins storyline. Just give Seth Rollins the championship. Seth, Seth Rollins said it was going to be an actual match. I mean, if that's the case, then I expect it to be good, considering what happened with the matches with Brock and Brian, Brock and Finn, and Brock and AJ. So I expect this match to be good. Just give Rollins the championship and put him in a match with McIntyre at Clash of Champions or Hell in a Cell and have McIntyre win the championship. You can't delay McIntyre anymore. McIntyre has been on the main roster far too long in this new run that he has been in, with this new attitude, with the entire the entire revamped package that is Drew McIntyre. He's been on the main roster since the end of 2018. Not the end of 2018, mid-2018. And he's not in any way, shape, or form been even considered to compete for the Universal Championship. That's fucking great. So I would definitely want to see McIntyre and Rollins down the line. Just give Rollins the championship and let that be the end of it. Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this edition of The Rundown. I would like to thank each and every single one of you who tuned into this video. A couple of things. Follow me on Instagram at TheDJStorms. 
Follow me on Twitter at Man of Infamy. I want you guys to comment down below which match do you think is going to steal the show and which matches are you most interested in going into SummerSlam. I want you to hit that thumbs up. Try and get this video to 15, 20 thumbs up. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, we are on the road towards 1,400 subscribers. And then I also want you to hit that notifications bell with a huge coup de gras. That way, you will know whenever I pop up on YouTube. Because whenever I pop up on YouTube, it is the best time to be on YouTube. I also want you guys to go and check out the Lightning Flash update. I posted that yesterday. It is in the description, as well as the rundown for NXT TakeOver Toronto 2. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm DJ Storms, and this has been The Rundown. Thunder, turn up the heat. You know, Thunder, not for nothing, this is a pretty sweet gig.